Okay, we're looking at uh, combining transformations that we met in Core 2. Um, so we've looked at and revised um, translations, reflections and stretches. And now we're in a situation in Core 3 um, where we extend the ideas to combining the transformations together into a particular order. So, for example, you might have a stretch followed by a reflection, or a translation followed by a stretch, or something like that. And we want to see what happens to the image of the graph as we apply these transformations. So, um, one that we're going to look at is why is it called x squared. And the reason why I'm going to look at why it was x squared is that it's we know what the shape is. We've seen it countless times. And so it's pretty easy to sketch and then see exactly what happens when I move it about. Okay, so we're going to start off with um, two transformations. The first will be a stretch in the y direction by a factor of three. Okay, that's going to be number one, and the other transformation is going to be a translation by the vector, uh, let's say, 2, 0. Okay? So we're going to see exactly what happens to the graph when I do this. So, if we start off with y is equal to x squared, then we have the stretch in the y direction by a factor of 3. So y gets replaced with 1 third y. Okay, so we can write that y is equal to 3x squared now. Okay, so that's stretched the graph in uh, the y direction by a factor of 3. And then we're going to apply the second transformation number two, this translation by the vector two zero. So x gets replaced with x minus two. Okay? So if I were to uh, uh, multiply this out, we would get three x squared uh, minus twelve x um, plus twelve. Okay? So What's happened to the graph? Well, the graph would now look something like uh, this. Okay, it'll be thinner or uh, squashed this way a bit, okay, because of the stretch. And it will now be going through 12 on the y axis and it's going through 2, uh, touching the x axis of 2. Okay, so that's what happens if I do it in that order. Let's see if anything changes when I reverse the order. Okay, so let's say we've got y is equal to x squared, starting off that one, and now we're going to apply uh, transformation 2. So transformation 2 is the translation. So we get y is equal to x minus 2 all squared. Okay, then I apply the stretch. So y gets replaced with one third y. So y is equal to three lots of x minus two, all squared. And we can see that this equation is the same as this one. So in this case, the order of transformation didn't matter. Okay, it didn't matter which one we did first. We got to the same answer for both. Okay. But the thing is, this isn't always the case. So we need to be careful. Um, one example of this, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this one. Okay, so I'm going to change it from, instead of being a stretch in the y direction, to being a stretch in the x direction. And let's see what happens there. So this bit will change. Okay, 
graph will be different, I expect. Okay. So, first of all, applying stretch in the x direction by factor of a 3. So, x gets replaced with 1 third x. So, we have 1 over 9 x squared. Then I apply the translation. So, y is equal to 1 over 9 x minus 2, all squared, okay, which is 1 ninth x squared minus 4 ninths plus 4 ninths. Okay, so the actual curve now, so it got stretched in the x direction by factor of 3 first, so that brought it outwards, so it looks a bit more like this now, okay, goes through four ninths on the y axis and goes through two, touches the x axis at two. So let's see what happens when we reverse the order. Um, so, first of all, we're doing the translation by the vector 2, 0. So we get y is equal to x minus 2 squared, okay. Then I'm going to do the stretch, so y is equal to 1 third x minus 2, all squared, which, when I multiply it out, is 1 ninth x squared um, minus 4 ninths, no, sorry, um, minus two-thirds, minus four-thirds, sorry, x, uh, plus four. So you can see, now, this time, oh, I missed an x out there, okay, now you can see that this equation is different to this one. So, certainly the order of transformation mattered, and this graph, okay, will look like, um, this one is going through uh, 6 now, isn't it? Okay, so it's still got that same kind of uh, shape. It's got the same shape as this one, but it's translated along. <coughs> um, so, well, it's almost got the same shape. Um, and it's going through 4. Okay, on the x on the y axis. So what's happened, and the reason why this order has mattered this time, is because I am stretching the x direction by a factor of three, and then I'm translating it. Okay, that's what happens in the first time, but with the second order, you translate it first and then stretch it. Okay, remember it stretches away from the y axis when you stretch in the x direction, okay? So if you've already moved along in that direction and you stretch, then it pulls it further away, okay? So your rule of thumb in determining whether the order of transformation matters, think about um, has a transformation occurred in the same direction, okay, in two of the same direction. So in this case, that was a stretch in the x direction, and then I moved in the x direction. Beforehand, this was in the y direction, and then I moved in the x direction, and there wasn't a problem, okay? So keep that in mind when determining whether the order of transformations matters.